On all aircraft in all forms, you'll see a little sequence of random letters and numbers. These are registrations and identify the millions of planes in the world. They are often used to track planes in the sky and or on the ground, and they are often used to also make sure the aircraft is airworthy. In today's video, we're going to be analysing these registrations, their examples and why they matter. So make sure to subscribe, but also turn on those post notifications. That way you'll never miss an upload here on Globetrotting. So how do aircraft registrations work? Well, aircraft registrations are actually a pretty tricky topic because registrations are so diverse. In commercial aviation, there are many types. For example, some countries' registrations start with one letter, like in the UK, where the prefix G dash is used. Other variations include two letters, such as the Netherlands, where their prefix is PH dash. Sometimes prefixes have one number, and one letter, like Malta, 9H dash something is used. And in Rwanda, they use one number and two letters. As you can see, it's always changing, and that can sometimes be hard to remember and track. In most countries, numbers are not used in the registration past the prefix for commercial aviation. For example, the 9XR, which is the registration template used in Rwanda, after the dash, numbers are not permitted. However, this is the opposite in Japan, with the prefix being JA, we then see a sequence of numbers. Countries like China also utilize numbers past their prefix, but these are unique cases. Aircraft registrations are different depending on the country of registration. Please note though, Aircraft can sometimes be registered in different countries from where they are actually based. For example, you could have an aircraft registered in New Zealand flying in Australia, but it would be under a New Zealand registration. One good example about all of this is before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Most Russian aircraft not built in Russia were often registered in Bermuda. This is because Russia has very expensive import taxes, unlike Bermuda. Another example of this is Kazakhstan's Air Astana having its aircraft registered in Ireland. This is just one example, but there are many reasons why aircraft are registered in different countries. Another common reason is that aircraft on long-term leases in emerging markets or countries without sufficient governing of civil aviation are also therefore put in other countries. This is because those locations that the aircraft are registered in will then have the responsibility of making sure the aircraft is worthy. Quite a smart tactic when you think about it. Aircraft are also allowed to be re-registered to different countries. However, they are not allowed to have two registrations in one country. Let's now move on to the next part, government registrations. Government aircraft also differ based on the country. For example, in the UK, some government aircraft use the General G prefix, whereas others use the military Z prefix. In Germany, they use a prefix of four numbers, Whereas in the United States, their government-based aircraft use a sequence of five numbers. It's important to say though that in the UK, the letter Q is not allowed on aircraft, as the UK Civil Aviation Authority has said it's too similar to the letter O. On an unrelated note, this also applies to other registrations in the UK, such as those on cars, and that's something that is also very important to mention. While we are talking about how aircraft registrations work, the registration on vehicles, no matter which part of the world you are in, is also very similar. There is a template that is followed. Now back on to aircraft registrations in the military sector. They can always differ. For example, the prefix Z is used in the UK with another letter following. So let's say Z. ZM. This would then be followed by the numbers such as 420, ZM 420. Importance of registrations is where we're moving to next. These little identifiers can play a significant role in the flying aircraft. For example, every aircraft must have at least an imprint on a fireproof plate mounted on the fuselage in case of a post-crash aircraft accident investigation. How do you think registrations should be executed? If you have any ideas, you can leave them below in the comments. Let's say you were starting your very own airline and also had complete free range to building the perfect aircraft registration you wanted. What would you have? Would it be a mix of numbers or letters? Let us know below in the comments. And thanks very much for tuning into this analysis video. We greatly appreciate your support and we will see you next time right back here on Globetrotting.